Good evening and welcome to The Update. I'm your host, Karan Bathija. And I'm your host, Sarah Clifton. Here are our top stories. Kittens of the world, you're safe for now. Two men dressed as Batman and Captain America were on their way to what I can only assume was a Big Bang Marathon or something else equally depressing. When they stumbled across a burning home, the two heroes sprang in at, into action immediately. They broke a window and Batman, in a true sh show of badassery, jumped in and saved the only living thing he could find, an adorable kitten. Captain America revived the little guy and firefighters were able to douse the blaze and no one was hurt. I've got one beef with this touchy story though. Captain America and Batman do not hang out. That means our universe is one of those lame crossovers from the 80s and I am not okay with that. For weeks, the U.S. has been between Iraq and a hard place over the escalating situation in Syria. With the use of chemical weapons confirmed, President Obama has been putting pressure on Congress to enact a resolution to go to war. And now, with her own unique viewpoint on the situation, here's Kelsey. Thanks, Karan. I'm really steaming over this stereotypical U.S. overreaction to this sort of situation. So you're against a war in Syria? You bet I am. Obama has a lot to answer for. Right, Sarah? Um, Kelsey, what are you talking about? Obama agreed to accept Putin's resolution. You know, I love being an American. Fourth of July, debt, reality TV, it's pretty awesome. But what I don't like is the way Obama is being such a poser. I mean, a war of liberation in the Middle East. Seriously, dude, it's been done. Wow, okay. So you think the reason the U.S. should stay out of Syria is because it's cliché? Absolutely. Now, I'm not saying we don't intervene, but this whole Dancing with the Stars action has really got me thinking. What other ways could we rejuvenate the careers of semi-plastic horrors from beyond? I see where this is going, and I already like it. I can see it now. Six washed-up celebs stuck in a bombed-out apartment building in Aleppo, Bruce Springsteen, Lady Gaga, Dennis Rodman, David Spade, Alf, and of course, Ben Affleck. Wait, I don't think Ben Affleck's career is over. Trust me, it is. Kelsey, I don't think the president wants to go to war with Syria because Bush did it. Or Clinton. Or LBJ. Yeah, exactly. It's not even cliche, it's retro. Jeez, I kind of feel depressed. Really? Not me. I'm feeling great. It's good to vent, you know? Hey, can we make this like a, a regular thing or... Kelsey, everyone. A thief in Bel Air, Maryland has made off with a prize watermelon, but they probably didn't get that far. The melon in question weighs over 150 pounds. Everyone in Bel Air is reeling from the loss and police say they are investigating all possible leads. But, you know what they say, the chances of finding the victim alive diminish greatly after the first 48 hours. Justice claps true for three San Diego high schoolers who faced expulsion after a video of them twerking went viral. The students will have their records cleared of the incident and no disciplinary action will be taken against them. I, for one, am thankful. I mean, if I can't express my First Amendment rights with my butt, what's the point of having a First Amendment? Speaking of twerking, comedian and sometimes funny man Jimmy Kimmel shocked the world Sunday when he revealed this popular viral video to be a hoax. Well played, Kimmel. Maybe I'll come up with a fake video and trick you. Who am I kidding? I, I don't have time for that. And now it's time for a little segment we like to call Fun with Freud. As always, we're joined by our resident psychologist, Dr. Sean Burke. Sean? Doctor, Karan, I don't feel comfortable calling myself a doctor. Is that what it says on the prompter? Because I'm not seeing anything on there about Our being... first story, 44 of the world's 72 tallest buildings are cheating by adding what architects call vanity height. Sean, would you say that calling these buildings skyscrapers is a stretch? I'm pretty sure this is not the story I wrote. Where's that clip of Senator McCain? We're doing this, Sean. Answer the question. Fine. 
No. Next story. An artist has been assaulted in Sweden after police mistook his art for a weapon. I should mention that the art in question was a fully functional gun that shoots penis-shaped bullets. Sean, do you think this artist is a straight shooter or perhaps a bit crooked? Well, I don't think he faked his injuries, if that's what you're saying. Oh. Um, that gun was hard. <sighs> okay, well, time for our last story. PETA assessed, asserted last summer that eating chicken during pregnancy may shrink the size of male babies' privates. After two months of grueling research, what have you turned up with, Sean? I got it. Karan, I'm sorry to say my research hasn't turned up anything. But it's not my fault. My mom ate a lot of chicken wings when she was pregnant with me, and because of that, there's just not anything that I can come up with, not and it's bad. not my fault. Not bad. Sean Burke, everyone. I must ask you a question. How do you feel about lawsuits? A Los Angeles woman is suing a local hospital after her anesthesiologist placed a paper mustache and teardrops on her face after a surgery. Now, I can see where the woman is coming from. I mean, there is a certain level of trust between the doctor and the patient, but in the doc's defense, he did get 150 Instagram likes, and that's pretty impressive. And now in our athletic department, we bring in our local sports analyst, Ben Dupe. Ben? Thanks, Kron. Let's get right into it. Tampon shoes. Seriously, Nike, that looks like an FCC violation just waiting to happen. I'm not even touching that thing. The shoes or the joke? Both. Do you know who Danny Trevathan is? Well, no one else did either until the Broncos rookie did this. Did he seriously just drop that ball? Talking about premature celebrations, it's like a Thursday night on Greek Row. At least it helped, however, that Peyton Manning literally played the best game of his life. The Broncos won 49-17, with Peyton completing seven touchdown passes and no interceptions. Meanwhile, Eli Manning came down with a bad case of who gives a crap. Staying with sibling rivalries, Serena Williams won the U.S. Open. That's the tennis one. Personally, I think it's the grunting. I wonder if everything is easier when you grunt. Ah! Wow, it really is. Eli, maybe you should try this. I uh, feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yeah. Coogs won. Woo USC, I hereby invoke the ancient rule of winner, winner, chicken dinner. Prepare for itemized insults. Number one, USC, as we all know, stands for University of Spoiled Children. Number two, the Coogs won on an interception, so maybe that Trojan protection isn't so great after all. And number three, I guess we showed you money can't buy you everything like love or skill. That's all for sports. Ha! Ah! Let's kick it over to our resident sassafras, Jordan Kawachi, for the latest in entertainment. Thanks, babe. But by the way, it's Jordan Danger Kawachi now. Megan Fox, you know, hot face, weird thumbs, hangs around with the robots. She's preggers again. Yes, the sexy star of Transformers and the upcoming TMNT movie is having her second child. I wonder if Optimus knows. Speaking of sexy ladies going off the market, Scarlett Johansson is engaged. I gotta say our writers are a little depressed by the news. Here's a vine. They stole it from us. Sneaky little hobbitses. Okay, that was Lord of the Rings. But seriously, sometimes I can barely tell the difference. Juicy J is giving away a $50,000 scholarship to the best twerker in America. Too bad people who are good at twerking don't need to go to college. SNL is gearing up for a big first episode. Tapping Tina Fey to host, good job SNL. I really think having Tina host will help your credibility. Hosting the show next week is Miley Cyrus. She is also the musical guest. Maybe she'll play this one. I never hit so hard in love. All I wanted was to break you up. Hmm. I think there's something vaguely Freudian about that wrecking ball. ABC, is re uh, ABC released this season's Dancing with the Stars cast list and here at the update, we are literally 
freaking out. It's like fantasy football, but with sequins. I'm excited by the wild card, Bill Nye, the science guy. Corbin Blue and Amber Riley from Glee are natural choices for first, but I'm a little confused as to why Snooki is there. Anyways, I'm offering odds on all challengers, so meet me behind the studio later if you want in on the action. Back to you guys. The very sexy and sassy Jordan Kawachi, everybody. A Georgian mother has taken the term mama's boy to a completely different and thoroughly disturbing level. For the last 18 years, she's kept her dead son preserved in her basement. When her 22-year-old sonny Johnny died in 1995, his mother Sweary decided to mummify him with the dream that one day his son would see how his father was. I don't know if that's sad, creepy, or sweet, so I'm just going to make up a word for it. Screedy. A British article making fun of the Seattle laws has surfaced on the web. Well, the update isn't taking that. Our very own UK expert, Robert Muncaster, is here at the table with us to talk about his response to the article. Robert? Thanks, Sarah. I got some choice words for you Brits who can think you can make fun of Seattle over sitting. You guys better watch yourself. We beat you in the Falklands, and we can do it again. Well, Robert, easy. Easy. No, it's OK. I'm, I'm half British. Oh, OK. Well, then continue on. That's fine. Right. OK. Look, you guys. I'm all for the irony and whatever, but come on, are you really making fun of our laws? You are at this moment trying to ban porn. Porn! As if you skies aren't already dreary enough, you are planning on taking away the only interest in indoor activity society has left. Were you sick of your people getting confused with the true meaning of bangers and mash, or have you just realized that your period dramas are basically softcore pornos with dragons? It's like you guys forgot the very legacy that Henry VIII left for you. See, I believe you gotta give as well as you take. So, Bob's your uncle. Here I go. Number one, you have a dessert called Spotted Dick. Number two, there are too many British accents. There are so many, in fact, that Daniel Radcliffe doesn't know which one to use anymore. Three, you put vinegar on freedom fries, which you also call chips, which also makes me upset and very, very confused. Britain, you're on notice and you're on out. Thanks, Robert. Well, that's all the news we care about. If you want more information, you should probably watch the real news. For the update, I'm Sarah Clifton. And I'm Karan Bathija. Thanks for watching.